Tyler Dunn right there, <laughs> guide extraordinaire up here in the Sioux, man. Northern Ontario urban fishing. <laughs> Sioux St. Marie, Atlantic salmon right there. <laughs> Pullets. Silver bullets, king of chrome. Oh, 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 yeah. Look at the size of that fish, brother. Easy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> There we go. Oh, baby. Yeah, we got him. Oh, yeah. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin, join the club. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. This week's episode finds me, Steve Nedzwicki, making my first voyage on the FNC-1 without the expert guidance of Fishing Canada hosts Angelo Viola or Pete Bowman. I've taken the Princecraft to the St. Mary's River, next to the city of Sault Ste. Marie, in search of Atlantic salmon. Thankfully, however, I'm not entirely on my own. Today I'll be joined by expert fishing guide and longtime friend of the show, Tyler Dunn. Tyler! Steve, how's it going, buddy? How you doing, brother? Here, let me take some of that gear, man. Thanks, buddy. Tyler has been a guest on the show before and has proven himself to be a top-tier guide, demonstrating remarkable success across numerous species and bodies of water. Oh, yeah, look at that thing. What up, you? <laughs> Loyal viewers may recall as well, he's no stranger to Sault Ste. Marie or the St. Mary's River. Hey, listen, are those those rapids you fished with Peter? Yeah, yeah, yeah a couple years ago. Two years ago, me and Pete, we went up there uh, chasing some steelhead. It was October, it was, it was cold and windy. <laughs> yeah, it still would have been fun though. But right? we put some scales into the net. No. We're nice. dose. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. I can't wait to get into these here. Eh? Yeah, same here. It's a uh, total different time of year, total different species, yeah. but uh, same location. The Atlantic's, right? Atlantic salmon. Yeah. 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 Bullets. Silver bullets, king of chrome, that's what we call them. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's put some chrome in the old uh, F and C one. Let's do it, Steve. Yeah, baby. Let's ready? Go. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so, whatever got you into guiding to start with? Ah, uh, so actually, I started in college. I took uh, business at Fanshawe College, and my small business teacher we had to do a business plan. So, I did a business plan on a fishing guide service, and that's basically how it all started. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you were doing this business plan, yep. did you do it because you were doing it for business or did you do it because you thought you were going to do a lot of fishing? I did it for the lifestyle. Yeah. Exactly. A lot of exactly. fishing? Exactly. A lot of fishing. And did you quickly find out that as a guide you don't <laughs> fish a whole lot? I found that out very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Being a person that employed guides to work for me, the biggest thing that I learned about guides and how to judge whether you've got somebody that's good or somebody that's not. Mm -hmm is if your guests come in and they've had a great day mm -hmm. and they don't talk about the fishing. Uh, yep. I you know agree. I mean? I've always said a good guide will rebook a trip on a bad day fishing. Exactly. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. It's not just about catching fish some days, it's about teaching and teaching you know, and just having a good time. Yeah, exactly. And they they, they hammer it, eh? Yeah, they hammer it, you'll feel that snap like a single snap, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it feels like a lot All of times. Right. I like the snap. Not long into our drifts, I feel a snap all right, but not the type I like. One of these kings of chrome grabs onto my line so hard it breaks. Oh. But I did manage to get a glimpse of the fish and now I'm even more pumped to get one of these monsters into the boat. Oh yeah, look at the size of that fish. This thing is nice. You drift them back and yes, that. 100%. Man, this current is strong, eh? Roughly five miles an hour, Steve. It's insane. They have the, the gates of the Canadian powerhouse just rocking right now. <laughs> nice. Well, I guess that has something to do with the fishing, too, eh? Absolutely. That uh, moving colder water will bring those fish right up to these buoys. I'll sit here all, all summer. Nice. Yeah. Though the crazy current of the St. Mary's River may be partially to thank for these Atlantics being here, it also introduces some significant challenges. The powerful current pushes us downstream so quickly, 
Each of our drifts is over before we know it, which doesn't leave us a lot of time to experiment with our presentations before we have to fire up the Merc and head back upstream. I know this current can be a pain. Oh. <laughs> Try as your patience. Oh yeah. What it is out here with any fishing is a lot of it's boat control. Yeah. When I'm guiding, I keep that boat straight, working that drift nice. You'll notice the guys out there that don't do the drift right. Yeah. They're getting the odd fish. They're snagging up every second drift. In current or not in current, boat control is still key. It is. Like I yeah. mean, even up on the French when we were yeah. when I was guiding for walleye. Oh, I didn't speak. You know, right. boat control, right. especially when you got four lines with guests <laughs> and everything. Man, you get you yeah. get into a breeze and start twisting and turning. The next thing you know, you got a, yeah. a knot underneath the boat between three or four people. That you have to fix. That I gotta fix. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And what is it about boat control in this water that is, makes you successful? Well, it's the speed of the water going we're, we're dealing with, right? Think of the, the fish, with, yep. you know, that presentation has to be almost perfect. Cool. <laughs> Let's get in there. <laughs> nice. There we go, Atta Steve. Boy. I, I felt wait. the first tick, and that's yeah. that cut fish coming in, tail whacking it. Nice. Waited a second, boom, and then okay. bang. Feels like a good one, too. Oh, Staying that's nice awesome. I can't wait to see one of these fish. I'll grab the net. And in this current, too, oh, man, it's... Multiply it by three, the yeah. strength of these fish. Yeah. I'm just waiting for this fish to take off on me. Oh, yeah. There she's going now. Sometimes it just takes changing up that color. Yeah, that's eh? exactly what it took. I think this is the second drift with uh, green. And, with the, yeah, the green. You've you know, been throwing white. We've been throwing white and albino, which is a grace and melty smell patterns is what we've been throwing. Yes, baby. There we go. <laughs> yes. When you've got to chase a fish, you know it's big. <laughs> that's, that's the way to do her, bud, right there. We've been using the anchor on our uh, trolling motor and it doesn't even hold us in place. It just slows us down and keeps the bow straight. It gives us a perfect drift. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. This is awesome. Oh, looks like it's coming back this way. Nice fish. Wow. Nice fish. Look at the size of that fish. Had a boy. Ontario Atlantic salmon. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, look at the size of that fish. This thing is nice. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm drifting back into yes. the net. 100%. Oh, that is a beautiful fish. Beauty. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, yeah, we got him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the size of that fish, brother. Oh, baby. What a beautiful fish. Oh, that's a St. Mary's River Atlantic salmon right there. Yeah, baby, that's <laughs> the stuff. That's it. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Baby bass and a darter jig head. All right, get that baby unhooked. Yep. <laughs> yeah, brother. Right on, Steve. Yeah. What are there? Tyler Dunn, right there. <laughs> Guide extraordinaire up here in the Sioux, man. Right in town, too. Northern Ontario urban fishing. <laughs> Pretty much yeah. what it is. Yeah. I love it. Wow. Big fish, eh? Big fish, you know, and they're just starting to come up. So the numbers are just going to increase every day for the next two, three weeks. That's awesome. Yeah. And that fish, the one that I had hooked up with, they're roughly the same size, yeah. I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, they're quality. The quality. Eh? Definitely, it's... Uh, at this moment in time, it's uh, quality over quantity, but Atta in the next boy. two, three weeks, you're gonna get a bit of both. You're gonna get some qu quantity of quality. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, buddy. Yeah. Well, let's do it again. Let's do it again, buddy. Let's do it again. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Baby bass, that color change. It's crazy. Oh, there's a hit. Oh, nice. Just horse <laughs> yeah. I'm on the St. Mary's River right next to Sault Ste. Marie, and local fishing guide Tyler Dunn is putting on a clinic, showing me how to catch mighty Atlantic salmon. Oh, I can't wait to see this fish. Pound for pound, they are hard to beat. Everybody says smallmouth are the hardest fighting fish. Hard to, hard to say when you get a summer run Atlantic, even a summer run rainbow, it's yes. very hard to compare. Different fights totally, but... Different fights, and you've got the current too that, that you're too. fighting. That too, right? exactly. 
I'd like to fight 12 pound bass in this current. Exactly. Oh, I, no kidding. <laughs> More commonly associated with Canada's maritimes, Atlantic salmon naturally colonized Lake Ontario from the Atlantic Ocean and adapted to life in freshwater conditions some 12,000 years ago. However, by 1898, due to the introduction of dams, deforestation of riverbanks, pollution, and overharvesting, the Atlantics were extirpated from the Great Lakes. Since then, Ontario has spent millions of dollars in Atlantic salmon restoration programs. To date, none have proven to succeed in bringing back these acrobatic fighters in significant numbers. However, there is hope, as evidenced in today's show on the St. Mary's River. The United States, through the Lake Superior State University, seems to have found a secret formula that is having some degree of success. So the Americans have been stocking this river for 25 years? Lake State's the, the major factor in it. They, they started the Atlantic program here. Really? They're responsible for our annual run. Um, the state of Michigan now buys, I think, 30000 a year off the university, and they put them in Lake Huron. Right on. So it's, it's you know, Lake Huron itself is getting a good number of fish every year now. Yeah. Yeah. That's excellent. So, Ty, we're using these flukes on the, yep. on the jig. I love that kind of fishing because I'm a bass guy, right? Yep. But I see a couple other boats around here doing different things. How can you catch these fish other than what we're doing? Well, first off, this is my personal favorite way to catch them. It's action packed. You're, you're casting, yeah. you're moving, you're watching, you're getting follows. Sometimes you're going through some lulls on action, but when you yeah. do get that bite, it's well worth the wait. Oh yeah. But they're, you're right, there's so many different ways to catch these fish. Uh, most of these guys out here, they're, they have downriggers down, you know, spoons, crankbaits, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of guys are flatlining crankbaits. Yeah. Then there's the fly guys. So there's fly fishermen out here that fly are back, guys, black, yeah. back drifting yeah. with the flies, waving yeah. them around, then you move in the rapids, and you got the nymphers, you guys two-handed spay fishing, there's that's awesome. There's so many different ways to catch these fish. Um, it's all time of year, a lot of, a lot of the issues with it. Um, right now, in my opinion, this is the most productive way to do it. Yep. Um, that said, in another couple of weeks, the fly guys will be, uh, they'll taken be, over. They'll be taken over. Cool. Oh, there's a hit. Nice. I slowed down that, that cast big time. The hop really slow. Boom. Hey? I so I slowed down that hop. Really? Instead of snapping it, just yeah. nice and slow, nice and slow. Nice. And a boy, right on this weed bed. Feels eh? like another decent fish. And I just saw one surface. Did you? As I said, you know, we should hold the boat. <laughs> Wang! All right. I haven't got a good look at just it yet. Slide down here and grab the net. Oh, oh, oh. oh look at it run. Oh, that a boy. Oh, easy girl, easy. There. Easy girl. That's another good fish. Nice uh, job, brother. Oof. It's always difficult fishing in current, eh? Oh, it spins the boat. Oh, yeah. Difficult but exciting, man. Makes it interesting, Steve. Oh, yeah. Can't be too easy. Hell no. Acting the same. Kind of dogging me in. Oh, yeah. That cold water is just making them. Wow. I'm a believer now. You were saying they're all good bites, man. Yeah, they are good bites, man. And you don't get a lot of them and make a count when you get one. Yeah. Wow. Powerful. Wow. Yeah, straight to bottom like a lake trout. Yeah, buddy, that's amazing. Lake trout and steelhead put into one fish. <laughs> now that's a fish. <laughs> I might have to go the other side of the boat here. All right. Yeah, oh, no. It's coming back. Wow, just horse <laughs> Yeah. It's getting bigger. Oh, yeah. Stay down, buddy. Stay down. Stay down. Oh, look at that. <laughs> For this episode, Steve fished the well-known rapids directly adjacent to the city of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. To get there, he first drove north on Highway 400 and then continued north on 69 and then headed northwest on Highway 17 at Sudbury. Steve followed 17 to the Sioux, then turned right on South Market Street, continued on to McNabb Street, turned right onto Great Northern Road, and finally arrived at the Quattro Hotel on the left. The Quattro is an angler-friendly facility understanding our needs as an extra parking space for trucks with boats, bringing in lots of fishing gear to the rooms, 
access to outside electricity for charging batteries, etc., etc. The City of Sault Ste. Marie has some of the best urban fishing opportunities in all of Ontario. It's getting bigger. Oh, yeah. On that fluke, eh? That fluke with the jig head. Yep. Nice and simple, yeah. jig head and plastic. Mm -hmm. And you slowed down your presentation a touch, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah. Instead of that snap jigging we were doing yep, earlier, I just, yep. just normal kind of swimming it through the water column. And that, you know, when we were using the uh, anchor hold with the trolling motor, it was tough to do that, it right? Was. Because the current was going yep. so much quicker. But once you start moving with the current a little faster, it's easier exactly. to slow that exactly. down because you're in the, you're moving with the water. You're exactly right. Oh, there yep. it is. There it is. Stick. I see it. Yeah. That's another really good Ooh, fish. Man. Nice job, you just bring him in, I'll try and get him. Stay down, buddy. Stay down. Let's see. Oh, down. look at that. that. Down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love fish thrashing beside the boat, man. Especially ones like that. Oh, what a beautiful fish. There we go. Nice. Another, Another beautiful brick. fish, brother, yeah! Another brick. <laughs> that is. Oh. Oh. That is so exciting, and I haven't even caught one yet. <laughs> had one on. I had one on, yeah. Wow. They're nice sized fish, beautiful colors. Beautiful fish. Oh, man. That is amazing. Let me grab See that. See the fin clip right there? That'll tell you the ear class right there. That tells you the ear class? Yeah, you can go online and look at the left pectoral fin. It'll tell you what ear it was stocked. Really? Yep. Yeah, she drilled it. Yeah. Now that. <laughs> Sault Ste. Marie, Atlantic salmon right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Guide extraordinaire right here. That's the stuff. Right on. Oh, nice job, brother. Oh, buddy. Another beautiful Another fish. Beautiful. Give me a hug, guys. <laughs> and you slowed that retrieve Yeah, down. big time, mate. Right. Yeah, I, that's, I'm gonna. We're I'll... using just a simple jig head and fluke. And earlier on in that fast current, yeah. we were ripping it, yeah. popping it like a bucktail jig. Yeah. And then now we're drifting down slow with the current yeah. to cast out and just let that, about the same speed as we're drifting down, sure. just kind of popping it. Yeah, it'll be better to, when, when the boat is moving with yeah. the current, yeah. we'll have more control. Unfortunately, my time with Tyler is up. He has an afternoon charter that he's got to get to. So thanks, brother. No problem. I really appreciate it. It was awesome. It was my pleasure, Steve, having me out. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to getting together again with you and, and fishing for whatever. But I appreciate you showing me how to catch these. And I might just head back out and uh, give it another few hours on my own. Anytime and good luck, brother. Thank you. Thank you. With the training wheels off, I steer the FNC-1 back to our spot. Armed with a little more tactical know-how, I'm going to fight the odds on my own. Oh, keep your fingers crossed for us. <laughs> hey, I'll take luck from anywhere I can get it. Tyler warned that the evening bite may be even more challenging. And once again, he's proven to be right. The fish seem to have shut down, the window of opportunity possibly closed, the other anglers disappearing from the water, and yet I carry on. I really wish I had a guide. My time fishing for Atlantics on the St. Mary's River, a species and body of water both completely new to me, has reinforced the importance of having an expert like Tyler Dunn who can deliver you to the right spot and demonstrate the techniques that will put you on the path to fishing success. Though I didn't hook up with one, I had an unforgettable day on the water and feel much more confident that I'll net one of these silver bullets on my next visit. Today's hotspot is where Steve and Tyler spent their time drifting the St. Mary's River directly adjacent to the city of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. The weight point on your screen will get you right there. The local anglers wait all year for the salmon and trout run in order to cash in on this extraordinary city-side fishing experience. The beauty of fishing here is that you don't always know what you'll catch. It could be an Atlantic, a Chinook, a Pink, a Steelhead, and believe it or not, the list goes on. 
Best of all, if you're staying at one of the local angler-friendly accommodations, then you can walk the river's edge, start casting, and have the possibility of the fish of a lifetime. For more hot spots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin, join the club. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode was brought to you by FishingCanada.com the gateway to your next fishing adventure.